Okay. Before I stop. <laughs> Excuse the um, interesting get up. I am breaking a cardinal sin I always had <clears throat> when I made this channel. I'm full of cold at the moment. And I have been for a couple of weeks now, so I've not made any um, content. I've got so many ideas. But something's happened recently, <clears throat> and um, I'm filming for my other channel, which does involve me occasionally getting inebriated, which I've done this evening. Which I'm aware other issues that I've said I've had, and there's another video in the pipeline for that. But what I want to talk about today is nothing to do with alcohol. It's to do with validation and borderline personality disorder. Now, I am a couple of beers in. I'm a little bit past. But something's been going on for the last couple of weeks, including this cough, I'm sorry. <laughs> and it is a key thing to my borderline issues. One of my major, major triggers, like just massive, is invalidation. If I feel that, like, not necessarily my opinion, but that I've been, you know, swept aside, ignored, that is a major, a trigger for me and most triggers for me cause aggression and anger. Not in a, you fucking want me, smash. Sorry, that's the Adidas tracks it. More kind of a, you know, not aggressive, aggression as in her, but more as in, I will be very, no, I'm done, fuck you all. You know, that kind of thing. And a major one in that is my job and if I don't feel validated in my job, like I need constant feedback. It is a flaw, but I need to know what I'm shit at and what I'm good at. And if I'm in a job where it's just, you're just told constantly what you're shit at, but you don't get any of the other stuff, then, you know, your job satisfaction is gonna go, rather than, you know, stay sequel. Cool. And in my current job, I can't be bad at it. I've not been disciplined, I've not been fired, but we are constantly being bombarded with, I'm so sorry, I'm snotty. <laughs> We're constantly being bombarded with your shit. You don't know what you're doing. You're not doing your job. But we're never told, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. I don't get too far into it. There may be stuff that may be obvious that I'm just not picking up on. So that kind of made me go, oh, well, fuck this, I'm out. And uh, it's like a validation, this is a story about a validation win. Uh, like, yeah, a validation win. So, and then, you know, the whole borderline fuck it up thing, because that's what I do. Please don't question the tracksuit. I don't wear tracksuits. So, my history is mostly retail management. <coughs> Sorry. But my current thing is security. I'm in security. In a leadership position, but you know, I don't want to go into too much detail. And um, I was like, oh God, what should I, um, what should I apply for? And I don't feel like I know enough security to kind of go for that kind of stuff. And I'm kind of, security is, it's pretty dead end until you get to like the team leader position I'm in. So you can see me sweating where, oh, I can't, I can't. I'm gonna have to take this off. It's for another video. It's a pretty dead end unless you get into an actual management position, which I'm not. And there's not really anywhere else for me to go where I am. But then again, I don't really feel like I've picked up enough to go where I kind of want to go. So I was like, okay, what's in the option? Retail, that's what I know. 
so I applied for seven jobs with my CV and uh, I got six replies like I got six interviews from it and it was like I don't know it's like 80% hit rate you know 80, 90, 85 you know what I mean it's fantastic response rate and I'll, I'll go for the job that I applied for and I'll go through what happened and stuff like that so and why I haven't gone for any of them. So I was angry, I was applying for things. I did cover letters and stuff like that. Thank you, this is a good case of ChatGPT, you know. You say ChatGPT, write me a cover letter. I am in this job, this is my history. I'm going for this job, cover letter. And of course, just in case it is legit, you say thank you and please. Because, you know, I want to be one of the good guys that survives when the AI take over. And it does its thing, copy paste, put it into Word, and then, you know, reword it so it sounds like me. So it gives you, it gives you the, if you just copy paste, it's going to, people are going to go, that's fucking AI. But, you know, I'll take the time and go, okay, cool, that gives me the general structure. Sometimes I could just go, uh, 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 edit it a bit done sometimes I can go no but it's giving me the structure of what I need to write and I did this for all those jobs so I spent a good six hours doing it and uh, the first one I was for a deputy manager at a cooking store the second one was at Sainsbury's for a night manager so it's all still retail the third one was for a assistant manager at a um large frozen store, farm foods. Fourth one was for Tesco. The fifth one was for a security supervisor, which is similar to what I'm doing now, but it was better money for less hours. Poundland, uh, assistant manager. What was the other one? It was one, but they didn't respond. No, they did. What was it? Oh yes, it was an eight. It, it was like advertise. It seemed silly. It seemed crazy. Or security for three pound more an hour than I'm on, forty five hours a week. And then when I looked into it, they emailed me. It was all to do with an agency, zero hour contract. I was like, That's bollocks in the league. What they applied for, so I can all that. But I counted that as a response with an offer, because they said, when can you start? So first up, first up, the pro cook one. These were all about how I fucked it up. Now, my current state is, I do 56 hours a week, day shifts, night shifts, they're all 12 hours. It's very long hours. I'm on six days, well, three days, three nights, three off. And it's, it's difficult for a social life. It's difficult for many reasons. But the actual job itself, it's very, very good money because I work so many hours. It's probably average money if I was just on the normal 40 hours a week so when I'm looking at a job I need to make sure that the money is worth the pay cut I would be taking so I don't want to go into specifics but a lot of them were looking at like £10,000 a year pay cut but I'd be doing 20 hours less a week so you see what I mean where 10 grand's a fuck ton of money but 20 hours a week is like two and a half working days back. So it was finding the middle ground for that. So first one, pro cook, 28,000 pound, okay. M massive pay cut, but 10 till six. So, you know, five days a week, okay. Selling kitchenware, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, you kind of see it, yeah. And then when I, when I applied for it, I applied, yeah, da, da. I was like, it's like, what are you interested in? And I went, oh yeah, you know, I've got YouTube, mental health, stuff like that. I like to cook, but I'm shit at it. Obviously I didn't put shit at it. I put something else. And uh, I got an interview. I set the date. I overslept. Because they put it at two o'clock in the afternoon. 
But I finished work at 7 at the morning. I had work at 7 at night. It was in the middle of the night, day, night for me. Which is a shame because, you know, if <sighs> professionally, yes, go to everything. But I wouldn't have liked it. But then again, so, you know, I emailed her going, look, sorry, it's between night shifts. So I was knocked out by hay fever medication, which is probably also hit me right now. No reply. All right, cool. No problem. A few days later, I had a Sainsbury's interview. And this was for uh, four nights a week, 10 hour shifts, uh, but three days off a week, nine till seven at night, you know. Okay, that's cool. It was a good, couple, a good hour away to get to because I don't drive. Okay, I still makes it up to 12 hour shifts, but it's three days off a week. It's nine shifts, so I still get the days. Okay, cool. Money was early 30s, so not massive of a pay cut, but you know, worth it for the days off. And I thought, okay, cool. I turned up and you <laughs> like one thing is I do not get um, nervous about interviews I just never have because I had the same job for so long I've always had the I've never been in a position where I've gone for a job without having one so I've got to panic it's always been a if I don't get it no dramas if I get it and I don't want it no dramas you know so rocked up and I know I don't wear suits you know I had a shirt small shirt on no tie Chowser's hand, you know, as nice as I could be. <laughs> and Sainsbury's are, if you're not from here, they're, mm. I'm going to say middle class. You know, there's some affordable stuff, but they're more for middle class families. You know, they've got a very that kind of outlook. So they're not Walmart. I'm not sure what the equivalent would be. They're not quite, I don't know. I don't know American stuff. And I turned up, <laughs> and you know, you can just feel, when you go into an interview, you know, there are times where you know if it's going well or not. <laughs> and you could just tell. And I walked in, and immediately, I could just tell it wasn't gonna go well. Because I think they were looking for a very, you know, uh, prim proper, you know, suited up guy. And what they got was ZZ Top. <laughs> <laughs> and I went in and I went in and I had the confidence and I talked about my experience and they talked about the job and I was like yes I could do this and in the back of my head I'm like I don't want to do this job it's very, it's very similar to what I was doing you know but I was like I'm going to sell anyway I didn't get it there we go I knew I wouldn't as soon as they saw me when I, it happened once before about 10 years ago I was much fatter I was bold, clean shaven. It was actually quite similar to when I started this channel, uh, my filmer channel. I looked like a white thumb, and it was for uh, Nike for back of warehouse manager. And he was going on about how <laughs> he goes, right? Uh, you know, we change uniform every three months to like you know the newest tech that we have for for clothing and stuff. I went, okay. He goes, our current one is mostly spandex, kind of sweat embracing. <laughs> and at the time, I'd come straight from work and I said to him that I'm not going to be in a suit. I'm going to be in more work here. I've just finished, right? And at the time, the uniform I had was, I was fat, you know, six chins. The uniform I had was like this mint green shirt that had sweat patches because I'd been working all day. I was overweight. I was breathing and sweating because of the thing. I was sweating heavily because I sweat anyway in most circumstances because I'm just, I run hot. You can see me kind of doing this now because I've got the fan turned off. <laughs> and he, he said, we've got this kind of spandex thing and he locked eye contact and I saw him go <laughs> just briefly just <laughs> and I thought well we both just imagined me in that stuff I ain't getting this job guess you didn't get that job and that was new as soon as I saw as I go I lost the interview <laughs> I just knew I'd lost it and that was what it was like as soon as I walked into Sainsbury's you know hi I'm Luke and I went and go hi <laughs> and it was done <laughs> oh, I need to turn that fan back on. It's only like I just I'm just a sweater. It gets above like ten degrees and I sweat. The third interview I couldn't do because 
they would only do it on a set days while I was working and I wasn't willing to go sick. <laughs> uh, Poundland, one of the interview, and I said, they said it was like, when I actually looked into the job and where it was and stuff, I was like, I'm not doing that. And the other one was for Tesco. Now, Tesco pay for, for retail, they pay really well. And it was or only a two grand pay cut, 44 hours a week. So, you know, it was like 12 less than I'm doing already. Three days off a week. <coughs> so it's four hour shifts. Sorry, it's four shifts, 11 hours each. And it was the same each week. And I was like, okay, cool. That's like, you know, I can guarantee when I do it, I know what I'm doing, I know how much I'm earning. And I looked at the job and I had the interview. And I was, I was in a pub with a friend, because we were like, I didn't view the next morning, we'd gone for a pint after I finished our days, and I'm looking into this job. And at the interview at nine o'clock that morning, and I thought, I'll just go for this interview, you know, I'm not gonna go drinking, so I'd like tonight. And when I looked into the job, and <clears throat> I ended up phoning my wife to ask about my justification for it, because, you know, this wasn't one of those, like, and I've done it before, where I was like, off the job, hate my current one, jump into it. Oh my God, I fucking hate it. Jump back, <laughs> right? And like, you know, it's like, okay, cool. So the money is almost the equivalent. It's many less hours a week, but it's still nearly, it's still 12 hour shifts, including an hour lunch. Except that a 12 hour shift at my current job is security. You know, security, I'm there. I've still got stuff I have to do but I'm there if I'm needed. So it's mostly just patrolling, hanging around, checking doors and stuff. You know, it's very, very generally boring. And then in Tesco, it'll be 12 hours of, you know? And I was like, okay. So I'm swapping less hours, but 20 times more work. And then the hours were like one, uh, 12 till 12, okay? But, it was like 12 to 12, like Saturday and Sunday. I was like, God, those are some shit hours. And I thought, and I spoke over my wife and I've gone, I'm not in a position where like my job's not a threat as far as I'm aware. Like, and I'm kind of proud of myself. I was like, no, that job wouldn't be right for me. So I emailed the person saying, look, I've got to cancel the interview tomorrow. I've got work. I wasn't just not going to turn up. I did that once. Just not going to turn up. Okay. And then um, they went, okay. And I've gone, can you keep me on record just in case? Because in summer, I don't do well mentally. And I've got the tendency to make stupid decisions like coming off my meds and stuff like that. Over the past, which is another video idea I should write down for this channel. And that's just how it is. So I thought, okay, cool. This is the right decision. So I went out and got drunk with my friend. Which, no regrets. <laughs> it was fun. And I made the decision not to do the interview for, like, logical reasons. Like, no emotion. And that is a big thing in borderline personality. To make a decision that you made with some emotion, you're like, oh, I'd like to leave here, but pff, it's a lot more. And then I backed it up by chatting to someone else, or my favourite person. Another fucking thing I hate about BBD, but we'll do that. And I used logic, and then I made that decision. Which, are they? Okay, I might, I sh you know, I might have, the advice might be, well, go to the interview, see if you get offered the job, and you get validation that way. But if I went like that, and then I got offered the job, I'd be like, oh, I have to take it now. And I kind of don't want to know if I would have been offered it. And the fact that I applied for seven jobs, got six replies with potential interviews, it's kind of massive, like, it really means that, like, my, my CV is good. That was really nice, and I really fucking needed that, because it's been a rough shit month. And, um, yeah, so this is a win, even though I didn't get any job. But it kind of made me accept my current job with its pluses is even more, like, you know, I'm always getting threatened to get fired. And if I do financially, 
I'll be worse, but at least I can get my CV that I land it out and at least I'll get someone going, yo, over here, and I'll go, oh, when can you start? Right now! <laughs> Why? Oh, contract change I disagreed with. <laughs> okay. Um, I hope this was entertaining or uplifting for someone. Um, it's just to say that this was a borderline personality disorder win. They don't happen often. I wanted to share it. Thanks, dudes.